Welcome to Chalk Talk with Jerry Hanlon. This is Coach Hanlon and uh, Coach. A big week this week, Michigan, Michigan State, and what we're going to focus on is one of the very key matchups, which obviously is Michigan's offense, which has scored uh, pretty well this year, but against a defense that just hasn't given up anything to anybody. It's it's uh, uh, one of the top defenses in the country, and what we want you to do is uh, kind of run us through a little bit of what they're doing up front and how they make it so tough for our offenses to move the football. Well, John, I mentioned before that Michigan State runs a confusing, they try to confuse you, and they confuse me. I'm going to tell you what I think they're doing and some of the things that I've seen, and they may look at this thing and say, Hamlin doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. <laughs> but this is what I'm going to try to show you, what I see some of the things that they're doing, and uh, maybe give a little uh, uh, indication as to uh, what they're trying to do with their defense. Right. So beginning with it, the number one thing that they like to do is they play, primarily play a four or five man front uh, with three linebackers. And so what they try to do is they play a gap control defense so that when they line up, each one of these guys has a gap that they're responsible for and they're going to try to get to that gap. And they'll do it a number of different ways. For instance, in one situation, this man may take this gap, he may take this gap, he may take this gap, he may take that gap, and he may take... Well, that means that this gap is open, this one, so that linebacker is responsible, number one, to get in position to take that gap if its action shows that way. So he wants to be able to fill that gap. That gap is open, so that linebacker wants to be able to fill that gap. But they're going to flow to get to there depending upon what the offense shows. So that means that they're really playing good gap control defense. A lot of times they will try to control the gaps by angling or slanting. So this man would slant here, this man would slant to that gap, he would slant there, linebacker would go here, linebacker here, which means you're going to be forced to come back. So what do they do? They sneak this guy up on the line of scrimmage and bring him off the backside and you can't block him, so you're forcing to run back into an unblocked man. Those are some of the things they like to do. Uh, you have mentioned the fact that they like to run, that they're concerned about A blitzes by the linebackers. And that's a little unusual, but they do it somewhat. And an A blitz means that he's taking that B gap, he's taking that B gap, so now the two linebackers come and go into the A gap. That's a difficult blocking adjustment that you have to be ready to handle up front. But those are some of the things that they like to do. Besides that, they like to get their safeties, if they're not, if they key well, to get up and get involved also into the game. So they can be playing like this, and there'll be four safeties will be lined up right over those tight ends, just like that. And they may be playing them man-to-man, -man, or that may be zone. But what they'll do is they're going to lock on to him. He'll like to come up and play run-to-run, a -run, bump and run with them up here so that they can take care of those two guys. If this man blocks and doesn't release on a line, he now comes up and be an extra man <clears throat> to the point of attack. Whether the ball's going there, he will go there. If the ball's going there, he's an extra man here. Same here. He keys this tight end. That tight end blocks. Then what he's going to do, he's going to come up <clears throat> and he's going to feel if the ball's there, it's an extra block, uh, extra defender. Or if it goes there, there's an extra defender from the inside out. So they can get you. That's playing practically nine men in the box. But they'll do it on keys and that makes it very difficult to run against. This seems like a little bit of a, a, a gambling defense. I mean, if you're running guys up here, this this should be open. I, and as you look at this, uh, it, there's too many guys to block a lot of times in the run game. Talk about how it can be attacked. Well, you can do that, but one of the things is, like, they may be then this guy, but you say, all right, we're going to try to hit you in there because they're going to hit you and run with you. Now this guy may be coming back in as a free safety and going to help on some of that kind of stuff. So it isn't like they're just throwing the thing wide open. They're going to give some help with it at, at, at also. In my estimation, what you want to do is when you're, when you're meeting these type of defenses, where they're going to play you bump and run and use their safeties involved in the, in the run game also, then what you have to do is you've got to make a good hard fake and get your blocking so that you can handle any type of a, a blitz that comes at you. And then, if you do that, if you get 
two good routes and goes down and gets him to the outside and breaks. Look at that whole area that you have to throw to and then you have this guy coming down and getting here and running away so that you have his this whole area here. You say, well, what if that safety goes back? Well, if the safety goes there, let's throw there. If the safety stands there, you throw there. So it's a read type of situation where you want to try to get two guys running on deep under and running sharp routes, not curls and things where they stop, and, but you're running to the defender and then getting away from him and having a lot of room to throw it. The big thing is to make sure that you have proper pass protection in order to do that. So you've got enough people to block them but you've got to stay on them because they're aggressive and come after you. If you give your quarterback time enough to get a read like that, it can turn into a big play. You're protecting on this end, but the other key element, I, we, we mentioned this, but is these guys, you talk about getting away, these guys in their face, getting their hands on them uh, in order to get out there seems like a, a really big part of this game. It is. It's getting off the bump and run type of situation and then giving him enough time to allow them to get to that depth where they can throw the ball down there. All right, well, we will uh, see how all this plays out on Saturday, but uh, we appreciate you giving us a, a little peek into uh, some of the stuff that is going to be going on up front, and for people at home uh, watching, they can, uh, can kind of see how this plays out. Well, uh, it, it's my interpretation of what they're doing. It may not, uh, Pat Narduzzi may say, Hanlon doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Uh, you know, Pat, I have to say this. Uh, I, I know his dad. His dad and I coached. I gave his, his dad his first job out of college. And he I was at their wedding before Pat was ever born. And uh, But uh, it's been a... Uh, Pat Narduzzi comes from a good coaching family. And so uh, I... I don't want to see him have a lot of luck this week, but I do like him a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're suspending all these good relationships for one day. For and one, then... <laughs> one day, that's for sure. All right. Thanks, Coach. Oh, you're welcome.